Nanam and Ahir, Augustin Vic, Augustin Spirit Naive. Amen. God with you. Father Brendan Kilcoin, Irish priest, coming to you from Athenry, County Galway, courtesy of Immaculata Productions. I don't need to tell you this. Subscribe button, Patreon. You're so good. Again, we're we're experimenting with these shorts, you know. And uh, I thought maybe what we might talk about just for 10, 15 minutes now is the uh, perhaps prayer. Just just have a little meditation on prayer, a little a little talk on prayer. One of the most oh vexed one of the most vexed que- of, of, of questions for modern Catholics. The first thing I'm going to say to you is that you're probably praying a great deal more than you know. So if you say to me, I don't know how to pray, that may not be true. The problem may be with your definition of prayer. Prayer's talking to God. You ever listen to a married couple who've been together for years, they're yapping away to each other all the time and half the time they're not even looking at each other. You may be praying more than you think. Hmm? You may be praying more than you think. Prayer is talking to God, but it's not just talking to God. Prayer is listening to God. So it's a conversation with God. So it's not just talking to God. It's a conversation with God. And it's a conversation that I... Look, I was going to say ideally, but we want to keep this practical. It's a conversation that really needs to go on all of your waking hours in different ways. So the Benedictine monks used to say, laborare est orare, to work is to pray. You dedicate your work to God, you do it as well as possible, that's prayer. Your relationships with other people, if you dedicate them, and remember, Catholicism places enormous emphasis on the actus humanus, as Aquinas called it, the the human act that you freely will and deliberately dedicate an action to God is is very, very significant. So I would say it's not so much that you're not praying. I would guess you're praying away more than you think. And remember that St. Paul tells us that the Spirit prays away in us constantly, ineffably, using words that are beyond words, talking to God on our behalf, the Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit within us. And remember that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Hmm? In virtue of your baptism and confirmation, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit, which prays constantly to God, talks constantly to God. Now, it's not a matter of you starting a conversation. It's a matter of you joining a conversation that is already taking place. So you can say, oh, I have no relationship with God. No, that's, forgive me, that's a lot of rubbish. You have a relationship with God. You have a dysfunctional relationship with God, which means that it's almost certainly Catholic. But a dysfunctional relationship is a relationship. A dysfunctional family is still a family. And actually, a dysfunctional family is practically a tautology because I've never met any other kind. Families are full of that pesky, difficult, awkward type of individual called a human being. And that's a recipe for disaster. So your prayer is going to be a series of of disasters, a series of shipwrecks. There is no other way of doing it. If you're going to be afraid of failure, I mean, prayer, prayer partakes of so many other human activities. If you're going to be afraid of failure, you're as well not to start. So some problems in prayer. OK, well, one problem can be that God doesn't seem to say much. That's his business. You just keep talking to him or keep listening. A second problem is I don't know what to say to God. Don't worry about it. Say whatever you want. Just talk my way to him like some kid talks to their parents. They just go on and on and on and on. They drive you to drink. And they go on asking you questions. Do you remember that? All the questions? And they drive the adults to drink. Just yap away to him. Um, And you say, oh, sometimes I feel like I'm talking to myself. 
So I've heard men and women say that sometimes they're talking to their partner, they feel like they're talking to themselves. Sometimes you're talking to your friend, you feel like you're talking to yourself. That can happen with any of us. Just keep going. Don't worry about that. Don't be so big in yourself. Don't be so fancy about the thing. I, I'll tell you something. I, I can't quote this often enough, the well-worn maxim. Perfection is the enemy of excellence. Perfection is the enemy of completion. Do you know something? Sometimes perfection is the enemy of beginning. Will you just go in and make a hash of it? Like a decent, honest Christian. Collide in the front door of the church. Fall in. Talk to him about everything. Bring all your worries to him. All your failures. All the things you're ashamed of. All your hopes and dreams. Bring them all to him. Thank him for your talents. Look lovingly at yourself, appreciatively. Which doesn't come too easily to Irish people of a certain generation, okay? Maybe that's a problem in several cultures. But the best I can say is certainly a problem in ours. Of a certain generation, maybe. Maybe more so. Bring everything to him. Thank him for things. You'll find it has a very good effect on you to, to do Thanksgiving. To be thankful. Above all, be aware that you are joining the conversation of the angels. He is there, like, have you ever seen the cliffs off the west coast of Ireland? Even a picture of them. Or any great sea cliffs. Have you ever seen the seabirds? The way the waves of them seem to collide with the cliffs and come back and they're circling and moving. The constant wave in front of the cliffs. Those are the angels, the cherubim and the seraphim and all the others in front of the Godhead, in front of the Supreme, shouting, holy, holy, holy. You join their conversation. Listen to Tchaikovsky's The Song of the Cherubim. You join that. You join their conversation when you yap on to them about, I don't know, finding the price of shopping and, and the most ordinary basic stuff. Talk to him. Listen to him. And you will find that you've been doing more of that than you thought. If you go out in the morning, and I find it, it, this gets easier as you get older, but if you go out in the morning and just, I, I don't know how to say this without it sounding so corny, and I despised this as a younger man, but I, I was the fool, not the older people. Go out and just enjoy the bird song. Go out and enjoy the beauty of God's world. You know, as the English poet said, heaven in ordinary men well dressed. You know, enjoy people. Enjoy people. I, I used to love, if I visited France, I used to love just sit covertly watching the French at lunch. I used to just love their gestures and their it's the little things that were fascinating. I studied in Italy. I used to love watching the Italians, who were great masters of gesture and expression. Will you enjoy God's people? Enjoy his world? Enjoy his nature? And mix everything up? Do you know when I was a kid, like every good Irish boy, I grew up on an unrestrained diet of Enid Blyton. Um, a wonderful uh, English children's story writer. So I grew up reading about the famous five and the the incredible 20 and oh God knows. I can't remember all the different, the different groups that she had and the people she wrote about and everything. But if you haven't come across her stuff for children, you must read it. It's still in print. You must read it. Enid Blyton. And, and one of the things I, I, I used most enjoy about her, and of course C.S. Lewis developed this, is that she had a sense of the wonder that existed in ordinary life when seen through the eyes of a child. A sense that adventures could and did happen. And there was a definite sense of the otherworldly in her work. One of the things I most enjoyed was that the famous five, when they were out on picnics, would mix everything up. So they'd have, 
they'd have sardines with ice cream or oh well I can't remember but you know they mixed everything up it was whatever they had in their haversacks and I always got hungry reading her books I remember as a kid I would always uh, read her books with bread and cheese I loved bread and cheese as a snack at night and cold milk and I would always have that reading one of her books mix everything up your problem is you're a posh person that's your problem. You're, you're, a, you're a, how, will, how will I put this? You're an aristocrat, right? You're an aristocratic Catholic. You want everything to have a chilly intellectualism. You want everything just so. And you'll have your sacred music in the church and you'll have this and you'll have that. In life, stuff gets mixed up. Stuff gets mixed up. I've heard people express obvious love for siblings and kindred while they swore lustily about them. I've seen people fall asleep in church who had a profound faith. I remember one old man snoring right through one of my early sermons to the entertainment of the whole church. He was up in the gallery too, which was worse. Devout Catholic, snored his way right through the whole thing. And wasn't it a beautiful thing that a man could be so comfortable in church? Mix everything up, for goodness sake. Now I know, all right, in another video I talked about respect in church and etiquette church. Look, I'm not telling you that you shouldn't have manners. But I'm just saying, you know, let me give you an example. Fulton Sheen used to prepare his speeches and in front of the Blessed Sacrament. I started doing that lately. I bring in my books and I work in front of the Blessed Sacrament. And, and well, what, what's wrong with that? Isn't this God's work I'm doing? I'm preparing sermons and I'm doing this and that and the other. I mean, if you're doing stuff for your family, bring it in. I don't hold with a man reading the form and studying the racing page uh, in front. I don't I really, unless he's a very Catholic bookie. You know, I, I don't see the point of that. But I mean, will you just go before him as you are? Lately, listening to a young a young person saying, you know, how, how, how much, how disillusioned he was. It's on a particular podcast. I won't say the name. Talented guy. I don't agree with him on everything now, but he's, he's a bright guy. Talented guy. Irish. He just said how disillusioned he was that on, on his deathbed, his grandfather was, was fretting about whether the house was tidy enough for the priest. And he shook his head and he said, imagine on your deathbed fretting about that. Well, yeah, that's a good thing to fret about on your deathbed. I mean, what, what was he supposed to do? That's a, obviously, he was the kind of man who took pride in his home and his farm and his, his place. And, and the visit of the priest was an occasion to Catholics of that generation. I mean, what do, what do you want from people? You young people, you're, so, you're such little judge bunnies. You know, you love a good judge, a judge fest, you know. And, and, and we, we fail every exam, we oldies, in front of you. You know, we've no hair and we've no teeth and we get everything wrong. Well, let me tell you, you're the ones. You're the one. You, you get things wrong too. As I come to the end of this, do you, do you want somebody, do you want me to tell you somebody, even if you despise this guy, somebody you should watch, you should watch one or two of his latest videos. You should watch Jordan Peterson. I've said this before. And he's there bawling his eyes out, crying. A top a top clinical psychologist and an international superstar. And he's bawling his eyes out, crying because of the suffering he's come through, psychic suffering he's come through. And because he is absolutely bemused, confused, finds inexplicable that he seems to be finding a faith in Jesus Christ. You watch that if you want to see perfection come from chaos. This is a brilliant man brought low by demons whom he knew were there. You see? You see the devil coming from a distance, but when he gets to you, he's still the devil. No matter how long you've had to prepare for him. For goodness sake, will you just start talking to God? Because the more you, you, you're, you're easily frightened off, the devil will talk to you. Oh, he'll talk. He's great company. He's mighty crack. Join the conversation of the angels. Will you sit down? Take the weight off your feet. Get that man a pint. 
Join down and sit and join the conversation of the seraphim and the Keraphim and the sport of kings to be played on the field of heaven. Talk to him. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Ismiriyev, God and Mary with you.